Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number four, beginning your painting with confidence. I hope you're doing well, and it's awesome to have you here again. We're working on this portrait of the man praying, and in the last lesson, lesson number three, um, we ended up sealing in the sketch. We sealed in the sketch with a mixture of matte medium spray and then followed that up uh, with some matte medium that we brushed over the surface. Prior to that, we whited out the grid lines or obscured the grid lines with titanium white paint. And then, like I said, we sealed it all in. And I had a little bit of an issue with some of the colored pencil pigment mixing in with the matte medium, creating uh, kind of a grayish uh, ground over the whole thing. Initially, it looked a little scary, but by the grace of God, I was able to work with it and basically just cover the whole thing with a nice gray tone. And we actually can work out of that. In fact, that's what I'd like yours to look like. Uh, even though mine was created just through the colored pencil, if you don't get this same effect, and by the way, here, here's a little white card to show you the difference between uh, absolute white and then this grayish tint that we have on there. But um, again, with yours, if you have something like this happen to yours and ends up you know, getting a little bit grayish, that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. But if you end up um, with a nice white canvas after you seal it in, because I encourage you to use three layers of the spray matte medium mix uh, so you don't have this issue like I did, uh, then you can do a toning layer. And that's actually what we're going to do in this lesson. Uh, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, first of all, I do want to be neighborly to you and invite you to join the portrait painting challenge. Uh, this is something you can still take at your own pace. So if you'd like to go ahead and sign up at realisticacrylic.com forward slash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. When you sign up, I'll send you the welcome kit that includes everything you need to paint along with us. Uh, the reference photo, the supplies list, um, palette layout guide so your colors don't get muddy and you'll be able to paint along with us even if you've never done a portrait before you can do it we've seen many many people take these challenges in the past with little to no portrait painting experience and they ended up painting an absolutely beautiful acrylic portrait that they could be proud of and then their skills actually improved from there and they, several of them ended up doing commission portraits or portraits of their family members, um, even getting into big art shows. And so you can do the same thing as well. Um, join the challenge. It's completely free. The link will be in the description of the video, also in the top comment as well. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to begin with a word of prayer. Just ask God for his help. I know I need his help. And why not, especially since we're painting somebody praying, Let's, let's pray and seek the Lord on this. Father, I, I come before you in Jesus' name, and I do ask that you would help me to be able to uh, begin this portrait well. Father, I just pray that this painting would glorify you, and I pray for the students that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, that you would provide for them. I pray that you bring healing to their bodies. If there's any aches, pains, joint issues, any kind of sicknesses. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. You took our infirmities and sorrows on the cross. And forget not the Lord and all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, heals all of your diseases. So, Lord, I do pray for healing for my friends watching this video, uh, that they can paint without distraction of any ailments. And, Lord, I just pray you provide for them all the resources they need to be able to paint, and that confidence knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, Lord, bless them, guide them, enable them to paint well, and enable me to teach this well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's begin. So uh, our first step is to put a ceiling or toning layer over the canvas. And again, like I mentioned, because of what happened with the mixture of colored pencil leaking into my matte medium as I was sealing it in, because I didn't have enough spray layers that's my guess why that happened um i already have this toned in so um i do want to demonstrate to you on how to do it however so i prepared a little test canvas here i'll just set this up 
and fasten this to my canvas and easel. And what I'll do then is just paint over this, giving you a little bit of an idea how to do it. Um, what you're going to want to do is take some matte medium. Again, that's not matte varnish or gloss varnish or gloss medium. You want to use matte medium. Liquitex, Nova Color, they're both very good brands. And what you're going to want to do is put this into a little condiment container. So uh, you have like a little food grade container and I just put in about maybe a third full of matte medium should be enough and we can take some ivory black uh ivory black and i'm just going to use the heel end of a brush or you can use a spoon or whatever you might have that's handy use an old brush here and i'm just going to take a little bit of ivory black that i have in my palette below me and i'm going to put this into this uh, food grade container and just Got a little bit of that on there. Now, hopefully I didn't put on too much. It's possible that I did. We'll just have to test this out. So ivory black. Now, I don't usually use ivory black, but in this case, we're going to use it. And I'm also going to mix just a bit of ultramarine blue because uh, when you mix ivory black in with matte medium, it's going to change the color. And so that's one of the things we need to be aware of as we paint on this is that the color does end up changing a little bit because matte medium allows light to pass through the pigment and it warms it up, it makes it appear a little bit warmer than it would if it were being mixed with titanium white opaquely, which we will do some of that as well, but we're going to have to do some things to compensate. Um, so this is, I don't know if I got this mixture right, just trying it out and seeing. Um, you're gonna have to do a couple of uh, test applications. I would recommend getting a piece of white paper or white cardstock or white canvas that is a scrap, whatever you have, and do a couple test applications first. Um, we're gonna go ahead and apply this right here, see what we have. So this gives us a little idea how that's looking. Now, I'll have to hold that flat to give you a better idea. So it's actually not too far off the mark. It's a little bit warmer than what I have, um, you know, on the canvas, but it's pretty close. And so I'm just going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue to the mix. So I just have a bit on my brush here, and you can see that just a little dab that's all you need and we're going to set that right in and just stir that i'm getting used to this so since i did this lesson last time i don't think i had this but i've been playing around with this new toy i've got this new video switcher called the atem mini pro and i just love it i'll show it to you here it's pretty neat it's actually right down here below my easel you can see it right there it's got all these fun buttons here that i can use to switch between my um, primary and secondary camera and i think that's going to make the video quality a lot better here uh, from here on out so i hope you enjoy it i hope you find it very beneficial and helpful i'm just getting used to it though the two different cameras the main camera and the detail camera i don't have a video crew here <laughs> so I'm just uh, doing the best I can here to serve you, and I hope hope you enjoy it. Uh, but I do want to say thank you uh, to one of my students. I don't want to call her out here by name without her permission, but one of my students really uh, was the one that let me know about this um, video switcher tool, the ATEM Mini Pro, and really appreciate it. Um, it's really made a big difference, and I know it's going to help me to uh, do more videos for you and to serve you better. Well wasn't trying to give you a commercial form. I don't get paid a commission. Uh, <laughs> here I've got the uh, matte medium mix. And like I said, I added just a little bit more ultramarine blue with it. And uh, I think that's going to make it nice. I'll dip my brush back in. And let's see what that looks like. Whoa, I guess that didn't get stirred in the bottom well enough. 
That's why we have these test pieces, I guess, right? So we actually can just wipe this off. Let's see. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't actually seal this in either. So it's anyway. Okay, so here we go. It's a little bit bluer, a little bit bluer, I think. Just want to get an idea. So as you're, if you're actually going to be putting this on, just brush it horizontally. That's the main thing. Use the largest brush you have. If you have a two or three inch, fantastic. One inch could work too. Uh, if you have a half inch brush, it'll be way too small. So don't use that even if that's the largest you have. If that's the largest you have, go out, buy yourself a larger brush because you're going to need it for this. Um, but anyway, here we are. And we just covered this then with this uh, ceiling toning layer. Um, maybe a, even a little more ultramarine blue would be good. Again, just to really compensate for the um, compensate for that light that's shining through. Because if you just use ivory black, it's going to look kind of sepia toned, and that would be okay if that's what we're shooting for. But we're not shooting for sepia tone. We're just shooting for black and white monochromatic in this. Um, so. Again, you're going to want to brush this so horizontally. I just did a vertical brush stroke just because I've got this small picture playing on this 8x10. But you're just going to want to smooth it out. And the best way would be to go from top down. That way, if you have any drips, you know, you're not going to drip back onto anything. So top down, left, right, and just kind of work your way down, work your way down, smooth it out, and try not to overbrush it. But you will have to do some kind of sweeping brush strokes to really smooth it. You can do some diagonals as well in a couple different directions to smooth it out. Um, and then some kind of fast sweeping brush strokes at the end that are more horizontal uh, to really get a smooth application. Okay, so diagonal, diagonal, and then horizontal. And that should give you a pretty nice look. Now, this is still a little bit lighter than what I have here. But what you can do as well, if you want to really get a nice, even look to it, and that's always recommended, do two layers. And I know it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's worth it. Uh, you'll still probably have some of this left. And uh, just do two layers. That'll, that'll really make a difference. But again, we'll take a look at how blue this looks here. All right, so you get a sense for that that color, but it's really necessary again because of that matte medium allowing the light to shine through the pigment. So you can't just use ivory black and expect to get a black and white look. It's going to look more sepia tone. Um, so mix a little ultramarine blue in there with the ivory black, and I would say at a ratio of about ratio of about uh, one, two thirds ivory black to one third ultramarine blue, or maybe maybe even uh, three quarters ivory black to one quarter ultramarine blue, somewhere around there. Again, test it out. And as you apply it to the canvas, you know, it's gonna maybe be hard to gauge whether you're on target, but just try to see it as a neutral gray. Uh, one of the things that might help you out with that is to download my value checker tool. I'm going to see if I can put the link in the description of the video as well for that. The value checker tool is something you can print out, and that has uh, several different tones from black all the way up to white and many neutral gray tones in between. So you could use the neutral gray tone for that um, just to check it out and make sure you're on target. In fact, let's see if I have one on hand where I can show you really quick. Well, I don't have that value checker tool. Don't have that value checker tool on hand, the printout of it. Um, but you can definitely get a printout here by clicking the link in the description of the video, and then that'll give you a good sense of what to shoot for uh, for your neutral tone here to put on top of your canvas. I'm going to peel this away. All right, and so this is what we have, and this is what I'm going to work out of this. Kind of neutral tone again it's just a little bit darker 
and white, a few shades darker than white. And again, you can see that as I put my white card on top, what it actually looks like here. Um, but this will work very, very well for our purposes. And even if you have some brush strokes like what I have here, no problem. It's all going to get covered up at the end. So that's not a big deal. All right, so let's move on here to the next step. So what is the next step? Uh, if you have this all sealed in with one to two layers, whatever you need to get a nice even ground on top, then the next step is to let it dry. Give it about 30 minutes, half an hour. Make sure it's completely dry to the touch. You can't see any shiny areas and it's not cool. It's completely dry. Um, and so once you verify it's completely dry, then the next step is to actually begin the block in the blocking in process and that's where we're just trying to establish that initial value structure of the portrait very important it's a very foundational stage but with the acrylic glazing technique it's super super important to start off light start off lighter than than what you think um, because when you start off light in this process you're going to be able to establish uh, the tonal value structure and make any adjustments you need to if you go astray. But if you go really bold and heavy with the colors and you make a mistake, you'll end up obscuring your detail work. And then it's a lot harder to figure out where you're at because you can't see the sketch underneath. So just start off very, very faint and we're going to slowly bring this to completion. Uh, now, so, since we're not starting with a white canvas, we have a little bit of a gray neutral tone to work out of. And this sense from light to dark. Now, if you imagine uh, this is your white and then let's see, I just happen to have a screwdriver here. So <laughs> it's just handy. Uh, I use it for adjusting things on my easel. So you can see how dark this black is, right? And how light this white is. And then, you know, we have every different shade in between. Uh, this would be an example of maybe a gray. This is my uh, Mars black acrylic paint, but it's in a white container. So it actually looks grayish. See these different ranges from the white, the gray to the black. Um, so we're trying to establish that value structure. Everything from white all the way to the mid-tone gray and all the way to black. Um, so that's really important to see that and look at your reference photo. Let's just kind of zip over there for a moment and you can get a sense of what's going on in the painting. So study. I should say in the reference photo. So study your reference photo, and that's going to really help you in the portrait painting process. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time and explain this before I even put the brush to canvas. Okay. Uh, you want to see this overall sense of the light and shadow. Where's the main light source in this image? Well, the main light source is this lamp here on the table, right? Uh, we have a little bit of a secondary light source behind him, and that's coming from the window. But this is our primary light source, this lamp. And our secondary light source is the window. Now, that primary light source then is illuminating his face very strongly. And we've got uh, these senses of, you know, the, the strong contrast, as you can see uh, right here on the nose and on the furrowed eyebrow, on the fingers, on the wrist, the clothing, all of that. Very strong lighting on the Bible. Nice highlight below the lamp on the table. A lot of light on the wall. We also have some secondary light from that window affecting his shoulder. All right, and so we have that highlight right there. And in the middle where these two lights, two light sources converge, we have a little bit of a darker value. Kind of a penumbra, a darker shadowed area there where those lights are converging. And so you want to make sure you see that somewhat darker area and that you observe um, in the image where your darkest values at and where your lightest values are at. The lightest value would be the lamp, uh, his clothing, that's almost white. You know, these highlights here, even the wall around him, these are going to be almost white. Um, and then we have the, um, the sleeves, and this is more of our neutral gray. Uh, this area here on the table, kind of a neutral gray. 
So we always want to see those commonalities um, in the image as you observe it. And you're seeing where you have some areas that are um, one color, color or tone in this sense. Uh, you want to see where else it's, it's happening. So we have this, uh, again, this grayish tone right here on the table. And it's very similar to what we have on his um, sleeves. All right, and then we have the darkest color. So we have, again, the highlights. We've got these which we call mid-tones. Uh, and then we have the darkest, I don't want to say colors, but tones uh, or tonal values, because this is monochromatic. Um, and those darkest tones would be right here under his arm in this recessed area on his vest. It's in shadow, so it's quite dark. Um, under the table, this whole shadowed part of the table here, uh, that is part of that dark valley structure. And then this left side of the curtain and the wall. Um, and the Bible, of course, that edge there quite black or very dark gray. Um, and then um, lastly, we have the uh, kerosene can here, which is also quite dark. It's a dark gray, very close to black. Okay, so we, if we can just make out those three different areas, we're looking for, the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows are the darkest tones, all right? Those three distinct areas, everything else falls in between. But if you can just get the three areas identified, that's gonna take you light years ahead of being able to produce a portrait that looks realistic and that you're proud of. So um, with that in mind, since we've studied the reference photo, and we're going to continue to refer to it and look back and forth constantly, 50% um, of the time, I want you to look at that reference photo and paint what you see and not what you think you see. Very, very important. Uh, we're going to begin then in blocking in this value structure. I'm just going to zoom the camera out a bit so you can see this whole thing, basically. I'll take this off for the moment. And uh, let's begin the process. So we'll, we won't make it super, super far in this lesson um, as far as, you know, blocking in a lot. I think we'll get the first layer done, but that's the most important layer. And after that's set up, things will go quicker. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look for the darkest value first we're going to start with the darkest value first so again when i talked about those shadows the darkest value let's identify that first and work out of that uh, we want to find a brush that's going to be a good size to give us the maneuverability to cut around the edges you know working on the vest and the shadows under the table and that kerosene can but cutting around the lighter mid-tones leaving the mid-tones exposed I find that this uh, brush here, the size 14, is going to work very well. And uh, this is a fine touch brush and got a nice chiseled angled edge, which will allow me to cut in, just like when you're doing house painting, lets you cut in on the wall. Same thing here. So we're going to use this size brush. Uh, it's maybe about a half inch or five eighths, something like that. Uh, and we're going to use that to begin with. So. Um, now when we're doing these glazes, you're going to be mixing a little bit of ultramarine blue in with your ivory black. Okay, so here we've got the palette. I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue. And what colors do you want on your palette, by the way? That's a good question. <laughs> ivory black, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, thalo blue, ultramarine blue. Now thalo blue is optional. You don't really need that. Lizard and crimson, um, pyro orange, Indian yellow, and titanium white. Now, probably not going to be using all of these colors. If you want just the bare minimum, see, I have all these colors on the palette because I'm working on many different paintings at once. And this is my only palette, pretty much. You could get by with just ivory black, raw umber dark, ultramarine blue. Lizard and crimson and titanium white. But you might need raw sienna. So you probably could have omit Indian yellow, pyro orange. Definitely could, can omit thalo blue. And you probably can also omit 
burnt sienna. Okay, so again, the colors you need would be ivory black, romber dark, ultramarine blue. Let's show it to you here. Ivory black, romber dark, ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, um, Indian yellow, and titanium white. And so that's from my experience working in monochromatic paintings in the past with the glazing technique. Those are the colors that will be most beneficial. Okay, now let's actually begin this process, <laughs> laying the groundwork here. Uh, we're going to take, again, some ivory black and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And we're going to mix them together here. All right, so maybe about two-thirds ivory black to one-third ultramarine blue. And I just want to make sure that tonally it matches what I have on the canvas. So as I apply it, I want to make sure it actually is really matching, like color-wise, tint-wise, what's currently there. Uh, so we're going to begin applying this to these darker areas. And I think overall it matches fine enough. It's pretty close. So we'll, we'll roll with this. That's good enough. If you want to see what it looks like on the white card, this is what it looks like there. So it's just a nice, nice gray tint. Uh, maybe I'll dilute it a little bit more. We want this to be, oh yeah, probably about 90% matte medium, 10% paint. So we want it pretty translucent at this stage. Uh, so I should make it even lighter than what I had it. It's just barely making a difference then. It's just, just barely making a difference. All right, so we just put this glaze in. We don't need to differentiate between his vest and his pants right now. Just treat them all as one object because you can differentiate it later. Anything that's got a close value to it, you can just treat it really all as one thing. And we'll just continue these layers over. And just shadow now we put a shadow at the edge of the table all right so again we're going quite light and here it is on the white card if you're curious as to what that looks like all right that's what it looks like on the white card pretty light pretty light and again we're just blocking in the shadows but it, we're starting off faint Probably a little fainter than what I need to, but I just, I like the idea of us going pretty light so that uh, things aren't getting out of control. Now, up here, we're gonna start on the curtains and block that in one section at a time. So the technique for this, if you're kind of new to acrylic painting, uh, especially with the glazing technique, is you wanna use a lot of pressure and really have large, large copious amounts of paint on your brush. Large, large copious amounts. You know, just like this. You can see how much I have on there. It's scooped down to the edge. And then you just really begin to push that in, almost scrubbing it into the surface. And that's the best way to do it. Now here I notice something. Yeah, on the curtain, I'll have to be careful because it's a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter in the center. I want to differentiate for that lightness. I'm going to actually wipe this off and make a distinction uh, because the, the value is actually a little bit lighter than dark. So what I'm going to do, there's a reasoning for this. So if we go back to our reference photo and just move over there, just want to explain this to you what my reasoning is see how the curtain is a little bit lighter and we have light shining through it i don't want to go too dark with this glaze right away because what i'm trying to really establish are these darkest tones using this glaze so i'm going to leave off in that spot over there um, on the curtain and uh, we're just going to go a little bit lighter there and we'll we'll hit it later with glazes after we've built up the other parts. 
Yeah, so we'll just do it that way. And I got a couple of pieces of, I don't know what, in the painting here. All right, so where are we at? Uh, we are going to be blocking in, let's see. We blocked in this whole area. I didn't make a distinction between the table and the actual area down below the table. We just kind of treat this all as one value. So this whole thing gets blocked in, even though, yes, there's the edge of the table. I'd like you to block in everything below the arm. Get a nice sharp edge with the chisel edge of your brush and then brush it out nicely. And then uh, this side here, this all gets filled in and uh, we're going to make a distinction on this um, kerosene can and we're going to darken in everything up to the edge. So we're going to leave this little sliver here alone because if you look in the reference photo that's actually illuminated and that's got a nice hard edge to it. Um, even though it's kind of a surface shadow, it's turning the form, it's it's uh, on such an edge there, it's almost backlit. And so we want to preserve that distinct shape. The shapes of the values are very important. Not only just what tone you apply, but where you apply them and what shape you leave behind. So on this, um, I'm just kind of show you this here. On this edge of this tray, we want to leave a nice line, a highlight on the top we can work out of and uh we're just getting that edge in so i'm leaving this area alone i did not paint anything here i did not paint anything there uh i do want to put in a little bit of a glaze on the right side of this curtain where it's going to be darker and that'll get us a nice distinction between that area and the wall so we use a firm amount of pressure if we feel like we can get a good brush stroke and we're in control of what's going on we, we get a chiseled edge up where we have definition naturally in the image. And then we fan it out from that chiseled hard edge into the areas that have more of a gradation. All right, so it's important to start that way. You wanna start using the largest amount of paint. And when your paint is fully, fully loaded up, uh, when I say your brush is fully loaded up with paint rather, you wanna start on that hard edge first and then move your way out to where you naturally would have a gradation, as you can see here in the reference photo, um, because it does have the hard edge here, and then it has more of a gradient as we move along. Uh, so that's really important to see that. All right, so now that we have um, this all in and we got that blended in, I'll put a bit of a glaze right here. And that's good. And now, now we can see if we, yeah, we can put in a little bit of a shadow here for this picture frame. So that's part of it too, that I think will be really important to capture. just the edge of this picture frame we're going to put that in here and i'm just using brush strokes kind of going across transverse brush strokes there we go there we go and there we go uh i have enough detail on the sketch i don't really need to do a lot for that so we can just kind of leave that be uh, I do want to go back to the clothing, though. I don't think I hit everything there. So let's go back and just block in the distinction here on his vest. That'll be important. So right here, uh, this whole area will get filled in. Everything on his vest, we're going to exclude, exclude the area that's highlighted. So if you can see that edge, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can really see it. Right here, we're going to exclude that and that and just brush around and around right there. And just fill that area in. 
Uh, we're also going to fill in the, the whole side of his head that's very, very dark overall. It's not black, but it's actually on the scale from white to black, it's probably about a seven or an eight. So um, we actually can fill this in here and go quite dark on it. And we'll leave a little bit of room for this highlight right on the forehead. The rest of it can all get filled in. The nose can all get filled in. The neck, now I'm gonna leave that area open right here again for the shirt. And then we want to brush it out just like so. Vertical strokes, horizontal strokes in combination using brush strokes in various directions gets the job done. But don't be afraid to really push that paint into the canvas because that's what allows you to get the smooth glazes is using a large amount on your brush getting it saturated in the weave of the canvas, and then at the end, using a light amount of pressure to smooth it out. And we'll put a little bit of shading. Yeah, just a little bit of shading. Um, first, let me get this hard edge right there. And then this hard edge, find it a little more. And now let's, um, let's get a bit of shading uh, right on this section of his arm. I'll just put a bit right there. That's where I was talking about where we have the two different light sources converging, uh, the light source in the back and then the other one. And uh, yeah, we'll put a bit down here and a bit down here. There we are. And because we have a kind of dark tone, we can go a little bit darker with these initial glazes. A lot of times I start with a 95% matte medium, 5% paint glaze, but in this sense, uh, in this case, we can do it a bit differently because we have this tone on there. Uh, I do want to darken the edge of that Bible. So let's do that. Uh, that would be this in a Bible cover. Just need to get a little more glaze on my brush and kind of remix it here. It's the same glaze though. We're just using the same glaze throughout. Now, if you have to remix it, you will find the colors might vary a little bit, but don't let that bother you. If you have a little variation in color between one glaze and another, if you have to remix the glaze, uh, not a big deal because we're going to just end up putting so many layers on, it should all even out. You might have a few areas in your picture where, where the colors are a little bit different. That actually will give it a little bit of visual interest. As long as there's not too dramatic of a color difference, um, it'll actually work in our favor. So don't be concerned about, you know, your glaze is not quite matching. As long as they're pretty close, you should be good. Now, if you just went with straight blue here, that could be problematic but you'll be mixing, like I said, on average, uh, about 70% um, ivory black to 30% ultramarine blue, and then whatever that mixture is into matte medium, where it would be about 90% matte medium, 10% paint to start with. Eventually our glazes are gonna get more opaque as we go along, which is cool. So it means that you won't have to spend uh, forever and ever on the painting once you get that initial structure developed. We will be getting definitely stronger with this as we go on. All right, as I look here, I think mostly it's done. I'll just put a little glaze here on the lamp just to darken that a bit. Um, but the overall sense of the value structure is started. So that's good. And I think this is where we're gonna leave off for the day. Yeah, this is where we're gonna leave off for the day. So anyway, this is where we're at. We just put on one layer, that was it. Just establishing the initial value structure. Um, in the next step, I think we'll maybe go a little bit darker and get some shadows within the shadows. 
uh, darken them a bit more. And then we'll probably in the next video also put in our first highlights into this ground, this neutral tone that we've established here. Um, anyway, I, I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for taking part in the portrait painting challenge. I applaud you for your courage. And like I said, I have seen just some fantastic sketches uh, in the group, you know, in the Facebook group where we're showing these off. You guys are doing a fantastic job. So keep up the good work and just want to encourage you and let you know you can do this. If you have a desire to paint, I believe God gave you that desire and that he will enable you to do this well. And I'll be here to help you along the way. Other artists will be here to support and encourage you. And we'll give you high fives when you finish that painting well. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment below in the video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep in touch. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.